Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul, and we are continuing with part three of the Kyosho Phantom build, and now we're focusing on the actual conversion itself. As you saw previously, we installed the electric motor, but now we're gonna focus on going ahead and getting our battery tray in place. And this is the F3A Unlimited uh, battery tray for anywhere from a 5S to an 8S battery. It comes laser cut, as you can see. It also includes two uh, carbon fiber rods that get inserted into this part here. And we'll talk more about that part in a little bit. And they even include Velcro as well. Now, this uh, plane that we're working with is the Nitro version. And as I mentioned previously, they did have an electric version. And the electric version came with its own battery tray, as you can see here on the instructions. And when we look at the other page, it was set up for electric in that you had a hatch already cut out. As you can see here, you already had a, uh, a former that was in place to hold the tray, as indicated here, and it already had the, um, uh, the hatch preformed in fiberglass. But what we have to do is we need to go through and actually cut a hatch. So I was given this a lot of thought for quite some time, and as you can see, we've got the fuselage upside down. And um, <clears throat> when we come over here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to wind up cutting out uh, this part in here, much like the electric would have, this bottom half. I don't want to cut too much away. But what I'm thinking, this is the line right here uh, where the cowling sits. So probably somewhere right about here, maybe back to about to here. And we're going to figure that out. But nonetheless, that's the plan. So let's go ahead. Let's start our process of getting the, uh, where we're going to cut the tray, getting it marked off and then going ahead and taking our wonderful tray from F3Aunlimited.com and getting that installed. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here on the conversion of the uh, Nitro version of the Kiosho Phantom, let's talk about what we're doing here. So I've, I've, taken, I've got this wonderful little uh, LED light. You can see it in there, and I've, I've lit it up like a jack-o'-lantern. And that's a great thing about it, about a, a white fuselage, you can clearly see the inside. Anyway, what that does is uh, we've drawn a hatch. It's a rather large hatch, um, but, you know, we're putting a success in here. So uh, we want to make sure it's, it's easily uh, easy to get in. We took the tray and just kind of laid it on here to get a rough idea of where to place it. Now, as I mentioned before, we're putting it just a little bit uh, ahead of the mark where the cowling sits. And uh, we want to. We don't want to go too far back because obviously you've got your wing saddle in here. We don't, don't want to do anything to compromise the strength of that. But we'll go ahead. We're going to put that in there like so. That should be. Uh, and then we just we we marked off the width as it relates here to the slots that are for the Velcro straps because a 6S battery is roughly about the width running from one Velcro strap opening to the other. So that'll work out fine, make it easy to get in, easy to get to the tray to be able to pull and, and cinch the uh, Velcro straps tight. Uh, so anyway, we've gone ahead, we've drawn it. We're going to tape it off with some blue tape and start cutting. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as you can see, we've got our hatch cut out. and it, It's perfect. There's more than enough room. After removing part of that former, you can see there, there's more than enough room to put a nice 6S battery in there along with the tray. So that's good. All good news. Wasn't sure how it was going to look but it's perfect. All right, let's go ahead and start getting our tray glued in place. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, let's talk about what we have going on. So you can see right there how we cut out a large portion of the former itself, uh, as evidenced by the uh, former, of course, being gone. And then what we're doing now is now we are plotting the holes where the carbon fiber rods that come with the tray will wind up going through, and you can see the rods right there. We've already gone ahead and taken the liberty of putting the holes on one side here, as you can see, and now we're trying to determine where to put the holes on the other side. So we're actually using that uh, plywood bracket. Let me come back this way. The plywood bracket you see right there as the template. We used it over here to determine the exact spacing, and now we need to go ahead and, and we're trying trying to determine exactly where the rods will need to come out. And then we'll go ahead, we'll put the template over there as well. Okay, so that's what we have so far. It's going great, going really well. So more to come. 
All right, friends, as we continue our update, let's talk about the what we're doing here. We're using the bracket that is glued to the battery tray that the carbon fiber rods pass through. We're using it as a template to determine the spacing on the other side of the fuselage. Now, the way we determined it is we took the bracket, placed it on the other side, marked off the uh, these lines here in, in, in accordance with where the uh, cowling sits right here, the edge of the cowling, and then we simply taped it in place, and then we took our uh, our wonderful hole making tool from Duratrax. Uh, this is actually used uh, for electric cars when you have a body and you're trying to open up body uh, holes in the body for the um, body posts and it works really well. All you have to do is just take it, go through and just put it right into the hole and you simply give a twist and it provides nice clean openings uh, uh, for the holes that does not crack the fiberglass. All right friends, Let's open up our holes and more to come. All right, as we continue our update here, let's take a look and see what we've got. So it fits perfectly. I will tell you though, I did try a 6S5000. Uh, it's not gonna work. 6S4000 would be perfect for it, and that's fine. Uh, that's It'll give more than enough flight time. Anyway, you can see we've got our uh, tray in place. Now we need to just go ahead and uh, just do some final gluing here. And then we've gotta go ahead and uh, find a way to get our hatch attached. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, you can see we have our battery tray installed. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, you'll see right here, let me zoom in on it, uh, right there. That is uh, the, the battery tray kit comes with these plywood O-rings. You can see one right there a little bit better. It's important to make sure that you do take the time to install them uh, because they add additional reinforcement to the fuselage sides. Uh, now, uh, one little tip I have for you, because the fuselage is not straight up and down, it's angled a little bit, you're going to want to sand the inside of the hole so you can angle it onto the carbon fiber rod that comes with the kit. Outside of that, they're installed, so our focus now is going to be going through and finding a way to get the hatch to attach. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, we're getting ready to attach the hatch to the latch. We're gonna be using an end pull hatch and uh, latch, and you can see it here. Uh, this end pull hatch latch is available from F3AUnlimited.com, and you can see the part number here, FH5007. Now, we're gonna use the Pond Racer ha battery hatch for our template, and you can see it here, how it's installed, and let's talk about where we're measuring from. And of course, I'll have these uh, measurements in the description. So if we're measuring from the front edge of the hatch to the front edge of the latch, we're measuring from the front edge of the hatch to the front edge of the opening, and then we're measuring from the front edge of the hatch to the uh, rear of the opening. And it's important to cut the opening first before going through and trying to drill these holes. It makes it a lot easier. By making sure you have proper spacing from the front edge of the latch to the front edge of whatever uh, hatch you have there, what that does, that helps to ensure that uh, that you get proper placement and you'll get more than enough of the pin going into whatever surface you have. Now, as far as centering, what you're doing is you're measuring uh, the, uh, basically you just measure the width of the, um, of the hatch, of, I mean of the latch, excuse me, and then use the center line that you see here as a reference point, and that'll give you an idea of exactly where it needs to sit. And that's important because you want to make sure it's straight. You don't want to actually have it going at an angle, um, you know, because then that requires you to go ahead and open up even a bigger hole here in the rear. So with that, let's go ahead. You can see here we've marked off our opening of where the, the, um, where the uh, opening needs to be for the latch, for the hatch, and we're going to open that up and then we'll put our latch on here, on this area, and then we'll drill our holes. More to come. All right, we've got our hatch latch attached. I feel like Dr. Seuss. Anyway, let me talk to you about what we did. Um, we had to widen the slot there a little bit. Uh, it was just a little off center, not too bad. But anyway, uh, two millimeter, two millimeter uh, socket heads is what, is what we used here. And um, in addition to the two millimeter socket heads, we also have two millimeter nuts 
And if you look very carefully, you have to put some space between the hatch latch and the actual hatch itself. Let me see if I can get this zoomed in so you can see it. You can see there's a couple washers, two washers underneath each spot, and that gives it its proper spacing because there is a pin, and you might be able to see it if I pull back on the hatch a little bit. See that pin right there sort of sticking up in the center? There, you see the pin? That pin, if you don't put a spacer there, it winds up rubbing against the surface. So you've got to have a couple washers underneath, okay? And even on our pond racer hatch, you can see from the front, let me get it from the front here, you can also see the same washers we have there spacing it out. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead. One of the things that we have to do in addition to uh, the, ha the hatch latch itself is we've got to stiffen this up. When I wind up pulling back on the pin here, the actual hatch winds up going like this. It, cur it curls up because this is very thin fiberglass. You know, obviously it's a very lightweight thin fiberglass, which is, you know, because of the, the plane. So I think what we're just going to wind up doing is maybe just try running some basic popsicle sticks here on the side. That should give it the support it needs to keep it nice and stiff. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and work on this side because I have an idea that I might be able to use to keep the hatch from falling into the plane. So we've got to go ahead and put something on this side. All right, friends, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, uh, let's talk about what we've got going on for the hatch. So good old popsicle sticks can't go wrong. As I mentioned previously, uh, this part of the hatch was flexing every time I pulled on the pins. So we just added some popsicle sticks here, just epoxy them in place. Now, this is the little tongue, so we're just going to go ahead and drop, and that'll keep the uh, hatch from lifting up. And then to hit, keep the hatch from dropping down, what we did here on the fuselage, you can see right there, we put a couple uh, small pieces of the popsicle stick, and that'll keep the hatch from dropping down. So the last thing we need, need to do is just go ahead and then take a piece of wood and put it right back there on that portion of the fiber of the uh, on the fiberglass, so the pin has something to go in to. All right, more to come. All right, friends, our hatch is done. We had to make, make a couple changes. A second ago, I mentioned that we used popsicle sticks here and here to keep the hatch from dropping in. That did not work. The second I put the hatch on there and got, put any pressure on them, they just popped right off. And more than likely, it's probably due to some resid residual uh, mold release that may be on the fiberglass. So a friendly tip, if you're ever gluing a piece of wood directly to a fiberglass fuselage, you also have to put fiberglass over top of that piece. And that's especially true for wheel pants. So keep that in mind. So what we did is we did a minor change. We just took a popsicle stick and put it on the bottom, as you can see there, and we put one on top. And then all that that does, it, it just allows you to take the uh, the hatch and slide it right into the front like so. And then what you can do is just back here, we, we wound up using some uh, some uh, one quarter inch balsa, you can see it, and we use two screws to hold that in place. Well, of course we use epoxy, but also use two screws. But anyway, it slides right in the front like so. And then back here, you just pull back the pin and it should slide. Oops, it should slide right in. Perfect. There we go. Ta-da! There's our hatch. Not pretty, but it's functional. That's all that matters. Okay, so the hatch is done. The only thing left to do is just put some uh, Velcro on the, on the uh, battery tray. And then I realized we're going to mount our ESC here. That's going to work best. So we got to go ahead and get that mounted. All right. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here on the uh, electric conversion for the Kyoshi Phantom biplane, let me show you what we've got going on. We've got a Castle Creations Edge 75 amp ESC. Uh, one of the reasons I like these is, is very simply, is not only, of course, you know, Castle's great, but these little mounting, little mounts that come with it, they really do make mounting the ESC much, much easier. And it, make, it helps to make sure it's on there securely. Uh, we went ahead, we extended the leads a little bit, went ahead and put a Dean's connector on the end um, because we're going to need to. And we're also using the arm lock 
socket and key. That's the other reason why I like the edge brand, the um, the edge line of Castle Creations because it comes with this little auxiliary wire right here, which uh, which is very helpful. And you have your arm lock and socket key, which is here, and this will get bolted to the side of the fuselage and has a little uh, key here. And when you're ready to to, uh, to fly, you just pop the key right out. When you're done flying, pop the key right in. It ensures the motor doesn't uh, doesn't accidentally arm with your arm being near the prop. All right, let's get the ESC mounted and the other stuff too, and more to come. All right, folks, the electric conversion is done. Yay! Uh, very easy, a lot easier than I thought uh, when it come when it came to uh, actually attaching the um, speed control. We just went ahead and used some good old pull ties. It works great. It doesn't slide forward. Uh, we were able to go ahead and get our arm lock in place. And here's why I love the arm lock. So right now the motor is not armed because the key is in, but listen carefully. And watch what happens when we put it back in. That's what I love about that, the Castle Creations. It lets you know that when it's armed and when it's not. And that's it, pretty straightforward, nothing complicated. Um, and so it's done. We're going to go ahead and just do the balancing and uh, last little bits and pieces. We'll get a quick video of it once the wings are on. Uh, but that's it for the electric conversion. And thanks for watching. More to come.